How well can a 40 euro sound card for a Raspberry Pi sound? Just as good as a cocktail can taste. It all depends on the juice. Five months ago I reviewed a Raspberry Pi 2B running Rune Audio software and Hi-Fi Berry DigiPlus SPDIF interface board. It gave very good results given the cost. If you watch this video in the browser you see a link to this review in the top right corner. If not go to youtube.com slash c slash the Hans Beekhuizen channel for all my videos. Only a week later Hi-Fi Berry introduced their DAC Plus Pro a sound card that does 24 bit 192 kHz, has separate clock oscillators for 44.1 and 48 kHz based sampling rates, has ELSA mixer controlled hardware volume control and gold plated RCA connectors. Here were my thoughts. If the Digi Plus was that good and they went through great lengths to make a pro version of the DAC Plus, it must be interesting too. So I decided to do a review. I warned the Hi-Fi Berry people to be patient, meaning that it could take some weeks before I finished testing. It took slightly longer. When the DAC Plus Pro board arrived it was immediately mounted on the Raspberry Pi. I had bought a second Pi and since the Hi-Fi Berry boards come with everything you need it's really easy. Mount four spacers on the Raspberry Pi board, plug the Digi Plus board onto the expansion connector and over the spacers and fix it with four nuts. That's all. The Digi Plus probe is powered from the Raspberry Pi so you only have to connect the interconnects between the two RCA's and your amp. You also have to copy the player software onto a micro USB card. Hi-Fi Berry has a download section on their site where you can download their brilliant installation software. It asks you what you want to do with your Raspberry Pi and what Hi-Fi Berry board you use and then automatically installs not only the right software but also the right settings. If you choose for music only, Volumio is installed since according to Hi-Fi Berry it's more up to date and better updatable than Rune Audio. I don't care, as long as it does its job and sounds good. Well, there we had a problem. This was not the sound I expected, not by a long shot. I don't want to review stuff at this lower level. It's just a waste of time. I love my job and really enjoy producing reviews unless I have to describe a piece of gear that's horrible. So I stopped reviewing bad equipment some years ago and therefore the DAC Plus Pro ended in the corner as a reminder that I had to tell Hi-Fi Berry there was not going to be a review. Luckily bad news conversations get always postponed. A month ago Scott C. Kramer gave me a following reaction on the Digi Plus board review. If you still have the Digi Plus you should try it with a linear power supply. You can solder a header to the board that can power both the Pi and the Digi Plus. Another benefit is this bypasses the Pi switching power supply, fuse protection, etc. This gave a very big improvement to the sound, very, very smooth. He sent a link to the video as well and that's clickable in the top right corner. I told him I'm rather clumsy with a soldering iron and I don't want to run a DIY website since that's not my forte. He understood and that would have been the end of it. But Scott had managed to plant a little seed in my grey cells. I had tried to use a linear power supply on the Raspberry Pi DAC Plus Pro combo the standard way but that didn't improve much. I had done the same with the Raspberry Pi with the Digi Plus board and wasn't impressed with the improvement either. I always try linear power supplies. I own a range of S-Booster Best of Two Worlds that also incorporate heavy filtering. Let, let me explain why, especially with DAX, a linear power supply is very important. 
When I was young, there was what was called a water organ at the annual fair in my village. This was an early version of the water fountain spectacle you see every hour outside the Bellagio in Las Vegas. See the link in the right top corner for a video. It combines fountains with a light show. One year there was a problem with the water organ since the water pressure was not so constant. So sometimes the water sprayed up straight up as intended while at other moments the nozzle sputtered water in all directions. Instead of a nice water ballet it was a disaster. The lights worked fine, the nozzles worked as intended, but the water pressure was not constant. A DA converter is in essence a digitally controlled nozzle that varies the resistance resulting in a desired current that is then converted to the voltage we need. But if the water pressure, the voltage of the power supply, is not constant, the resulting fountain, the audio signal, cannot completely be predicted. Now imagine that the water pressure was also used for other purposes, like some water spraying in the adjacent boat ride. Then you would be sure the result can never be constant. This is exactly the case with the DAC boards in computers, including the DAC Plus Pro on the Raspberry Pi. What Scott had suggested was to connect the water source directly to the fountains, so that anything else had to do with the water pressure that was left after the fountains. In DAC terms, it was going to connect the linear power supply directly to the DAC Plus Pro board. I ordered some angled print headers and soldered one to the DAC Plus Pro. The matching connector and leads were soldered to an adapter that connected to the S-Booster 5 v 1.5 amp filtered power supply. It is generally advised to use a 2 amp power supply for the Raspberry Pi 2B, but the S-Booster supply had worked perfectly for a week now without any problems. I have drilled a hole in the side of my Hi-Fi Berry case where the new power connector sticks out. A locking connector would have been nicer, but this will do. The transformation was stunning. Where I initially didn't even want to do a review, I am now rather enthusiastic. It sounds better than for instance the New Force Micro DAC 3 and the AudioQuest Dragonfly connected directly to the Raspberry Pi via USB and fed from a standard switching power supply. It has a relaxed, stressless sound, offers remarkable transients for the money and is good enough for me to listen to all day, meaning that there's nothing frustrating the sound. Not that it equals my top DAX or for instance the, the Mojo, but I would scale this combo at the low end of my set too, quite a feat. And that's all thanks to a better power supply. That leads us to a complicating matter. Good audiophile linear power supplies aren't cheap. I use an older S-Booster model that costed 160 euros then. The current model is even 225 euros. If you are somewhat handy and have basic understanding of electrics, you can build something using modules like the Tentlabs tube heater supply. Including a cabinet, a mains transformer, connectors, screws and so on, you might spend around $80. But you have to be careful since you work with mains power. And don't ask me how to do it. I can't and I won't help. Producing one review a week in writing and on video takes already more time than a normal day job would take. I love the Raspberry Pis and the Hi-Fi Berry boards. Since these boards use the expansion port rather than the USB bus that handles the network adapter, the combo works fine. The Volumio software works fine, can even do airplay at 44.1 kHz and is free. Excluding the power supply, the Raspberry Pi 2B, DAC Plus Pro and acrylic housing can be had for less than 100 euros. The standard power supply for the Raspberry Pi is a switching power supply that, like almost all switching power supplies, generates a lot of high frequency noise. 
see them as variations in water pressure caused by bubbles in the water. Linear power supplies use expensive transformers and audiophile grade ones use audiophile grade capacitors and inductors. There is no such thing as a free lunch and in this case there probably isn't even a cheap lunch. Still, if you spend 325 euros you do get a streamer that sounds better than standard streamers you can buy for that money. It will also sound better than using a Raspberry Pi 2B with standard power supply together with a USB DAC like the Micro DAC 3 or Dragonfly. You do need a bit of computer literacy. You need to do it all by yourself or find a user group for I can't and I won't help you. But when it's running, it works fine, is not limited to the number of tracks it can index, works with any app that works with the Linux music player daemon like MPET or MPOT. If you like to work with computers, the Raspberry Pi 2B with Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus Pro sound card and the Volumio software when combined with a low noise linear power supply offers a lot of sound quality for the money. But if you are computer illiterate, stay away from it. Don't even let your handy nephew install it for it will fail when he just finished school and is hiking down under. I have reviewed many ready to use players and there are more to come. So subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook page or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there. You'll find the links below this video in YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I'm Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you the next video or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.